Good morning, everybody. So if all has gone to plan, this first scheduled in advance live photo moment actually went live. I saw a countdown and then it started. And for those of you who are actually watching, please do let me know in the comments if you saw me start talking or if it kind of cut in partway through my opening sentence, because I see like one thing says going live and then it says live and then it changed again and it said live again. So I really don't know what's going on. So anyway, please, for those of you who actually watched this from the beginning, please do let me know in the comments what you did or didn't see. But in the meantime, welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. It is Monday and I am just back from, uh, what was that thing called? Adobe Max. I'm just back from Adobe Max. Um, oh, David Nice saying, as soon as I started talking, thank you very much, David. That's awesome. Wow, this whole scheduling thing actually worked. Fantastic. So I'm just from, back from Adobe Max. If you didn't see, I posted a few delayed photo moments from the show floor. So ran things a little bit differently there because I couldn't go live the first day. Uh, second day, could I? I don't remember what. I said. Anyway, I couldn't go live all the time. Either it was too busy because um, I was at an event or it was I couldn't get a reception, couldn't get a signal and so on. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I did, however, post onto the YouTubes. So if you haven't seen that, you can check out this URL right here. The go to photojoseph.com slash moments. It'll redirect you to my YouTube page where you can see the uh, the videos that I uploaded. So that was kind of fun there because I did something a bit different since I was at the event and there was always uh, obviously stuff going on all day long. I shot a bunch of kind of vlogging style, just shot a bunch of stuff throughout the day, edited that together, and then I recorded a little me on camera talking and then inserted those in. So if you haven't seen them, please check them out. Uh, there's one for Wednesday and Thursday. The Friday one I still haven't finished, so I will get that up, I promise. It's almost done. I just I was going to finish it on the plane last night, and it was like this on the, on the plane, so didn't get to it. But um, but those were really fun to put together. Now we're back into our regularly scheduled programming, just be doing them from here like normal. But I think that I will continue to do those kind of vlogging style ones when I travel because that was a lot of fun. It was a kind of a neat thing to do. Anyway, let's get into today's topic, something completely different. Today's topic is about should you deliver prints or digital or both? to your clients. Now, obviously, to some degree, this is going to depend on who your client is and what type of work you're talking about. But for things like things involving people, are you talking weddings or portraits, family photos, anything like that, events, parties, should you deliver prints or digital or both? So let's look at a couple different sides of the arguments. From the digital side, pros and cons, if you deliver digital images, then that means the client has something that they can share. They can post on Facebook. They can um, email their friends. They can print. There's a lot of things they can do with digital. So some of those may be good for you. Some of those may be not so good for you. So if you give them files that they can post on Facebook and you watermark them, and I don't mean like big, huge, oh, shot by a photo of Joseph, but like a nice little subtle branding, then that gives them something that they can post on their Facebook page, on Twitter, wherever they're going to share, probably going to be Facebook. And hopefully, possibly drum up business for you, right? So this is definitely a good thing. If you give people images that they can put on Facebook and you put a watermark on there because you can't really rely on your clients to remember to tag you, oh, this photo was taken by, probably not going to happen. You can ask them to, probably not going to happen every time, at least not every time. But if you put a little watermark on there, nice and subtle, then that can be very good marketing for you, right? So if you have done a family portrait, uh, a wedding, uh, whatever, and they post those photos on, people see the pictures. Oh, there's beautiful pictures. Oh, and pictures like that. How do I get pictures like that? Oh, look, there's the photographer's name right there. I'll look them up and off you go. So that's ideal, right? But then if you give them digital, that means that they can probably print. Now, let's think about the printing side for a second. If you, if, if you give something digital for Facebook, Currently on Facebook, the largest size that's recommended, if you look up the stats and see what the recommended is, is if I remember right, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's right, is 2048 pixels wide. Now, 2048 pixels is a lot of pixels. In fact, if we go 2048, oops, let's try that again, 2048, and we divide that by 300 for a 300 DPI print, that is a almost seven inch wide print. Okay, so five by seven, you're like, ah, five by seven is not that big. But you don't have to print 300 DPI, do you? You can go, let's go 2048, divided by 150 DPI print. And now you're talking about a almost 14 inch wide print or tall, obviously, depending on the orientation. Now that's a big print. So now you have to worry about, well, hold on. If I'm trying to sell my client prints, 
that's what I want to do, right? I want to sell them prints. I want them to come back to me and say, hey, I want to place an order for an 8x10, 11x14, 20x30, whatever. But you've just delivered the digital files that are that high resolution. They might just go take them to the local Walmart and print them there, and then you're out of all that money, right? So not so good. Okay, so what do you do? Well, obviously, there is no one answer and there is no easy right answer. This is really depending on you, your business, your business model and what you want. For some people, making money off the prints is a complete non-starter. They don't care because ordering prints is a hassle, right? If I'm, if a client comes back to me and says, hey, I want an 8x10 and a, a couple of 4x6s and maybe a couple of 5x7s, I want that picture and that picture and then that one and then that one over there. Now you've got to go through and size them, print them, order that. And unless you're selling them at a considerable markup, odds are you're not going to make that much money off them. So it might be a little bit more of a pain than it's worth. Of course, if you are selling them at a higher price, if you're saying, I don't know, say you're selling them for eight, 100 bucks for an 8x10, well, now maybe it's worth your time to go ahead and do that. But if they are looking at the digital print, digital files that they already have, and you're going to charge them 100 bucks, and they go, well, I can go to Thrifty and I can get an 8x10 for $2.50, why on earth am I going to go to you? So now you've got to sell it. You've got to convince them that the print quality coming from you is going to be better. You're going to get it printed out at a professional lab. You're going to meticulously go through and make sure that it needs no uh, no retouching, you know, beyond what you may have delivered for the digital images. You got to make sure that it's perfect for that, that the color is right, the sharpening is right, better quality paper. Maybe you're going to frame it, a lot of different options, but you got to sell it, right? That's something that you've got to sell to them, convince them to buy. A lot of people don't care. They just go, ah, I don't need to print. And the real truth of it is that a lot of people won't print because these days, most people just want their digital, right? They just want the pictures to share online. Okay, so now let's go back to what you're sharing if you're, or what you're providing. If you're going to provide digital images with the intention of them putting them on Facebook, that may be all they ever go. And that's great. So, you're, okay, so I'm not losing any money on prints or the prints that they're making that they should be ordering from me. But that's a little bit disappointing. Not that they're not making any more money. Forget the money. It's a little disappointing that these things aren't getting printed because at the end of the day, isn't it nice to have a tangible print in your hand like that's that's nice right you look at your photos on paper and you go oh this is this is nice this is what it was all about it wasn't for seeing on the screen i mean okay it's great we see it on the screen that's wonderful i love that but man don't you want that tangible print that's a really nice thing to have well, if your client's not going to do it and you're not going to do it then nobody's going to do it so now you get into the idea well should you be delivering prints should you be delivering prints as a part of the package. Let's say you do it as a package. Hey, when I give you these, um, we do these pictures, we're gonna do a portrait session. I'm gonna deliver, I don't know, 20 digital files or 30 digital files or two digital files, whatever it's gonna be, whatever your package is. Should you include prints in that? And maybe not even make it an option. And now this is where I tend to lean. I think that printing is a beautiful thing. I love prints. Now, am I going to, do I want to print out a big stack of eight by tens and say, hey, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get 30 eight by tens. That's a bit silly, isn't it? I mean, come on, who really wants 30 eight by 10 pictures? What are they gonna do with them? But if you print smaller prints and you print really nice smaller prints, then maybe, just maybe, that's something that they have this tangible thing that they, some of them maybe they'll give away, maybe they'll stick some on, um, on their wall, pin it to their board, stick them on the fridge, maybe they'll actually frame them, and maybe, just maybe, because they have this really nice quality print in their hand, they're gonna say, you know, I want another one of these. I have no idea how to order this because this is clearly not the thing you get from the local drugstore. This is something different. I want a really big version of this. Let me call up my photographer and order that. And now you've given them something else. So if you're going to give them prints, should you also give them the digital? Again, it's going to depend on what you're doing, but I would say yes, because you do want them to share the pictures. That's what they want. That's what they want is they want to share their pictures online. So if you give them the digital, maybe not full resolution, but give them those 2048 for Facebook or 1024 for Facebook, make it a little bit smaller, plenty of resolution to share on Facebook. Make sure you put that watermark on there. So if they do print it, at least there's the watermark on there. Although, you know, they could crop it out, whatever. Um, if they're going to, if the client is just going to print it at the local drugstore, just, just forget it. Don't, don't argue it. Don't even try. Just, just all you can do is convince them, try to convince them that you can deliver a better printed product. But if you hand them that better printed product to begin with, even if it's a small one, this can be a really, really nice thing. So let me see, I've got some pictures here that hopefully have, of course it's not, I put them into an album so that I could find them easily on the other computer and they are apparently not syncing over to here. Um, shoot, well, 
I guess not. So I wanted to show some pictures of a little print wall that I had made. Um, let me try a quick search here to show, of course not, uh, to show a client uh, or rather to deliver to the client those prints. So I did this, I built this wall. And this is not my original idea. I got this from attending WPPI, the conference, Wedding Portrait Professional International, I think that's it, conference. Um, if you are a wedding or a portrait photographer, by all means, I highly recommend you go to WPPI every year in Las Vegas, March, I think that's right. Um, just Google it. Uh, very educational. And one of the things that, um, that I learned, one of the things that I you know, experienced there and thought, oh, this is a good idea, was this idea of building a photo wall, a reveal wall. And this turned into a, let's see if I can pull it up in this machine, turned into a really cool thing, a really cool way to deliver my prints. So I created, oh, look, they are, they're right up, right up on screen. Perfect. So let me go full screen here and we'll switch over to this machine in just a second. Here we go. So uh, is this on? Oh, good. My switcher is totally not working. There we go. It's back on and perfect. So here's the photo wall. These are clients getting their prints. And you can see these are small four by four inches, I think, um, prints and put them up in the wall, lit up the wall nicely and had this kind of a reveal where the client came in and I had this turned away from the door so they wouldn't see it right away. They'll come in, welcome, welcome, yada, yada. And they see it there and they're like, oh, I want to see it, I want to see it. And then you get to wait, you can reveal it. You could cover it with a blanket or something and reveal it um, or turn it or whatever. I just had it kind of facing a different direction. So when they came in, they got to see those on the wall. And this was such a really fun and cool way for them to experience getting their prints. And they loved it. They loved, they spent probably half an hour going, oh, this, oh, this, oh, I love that one. Mom and daughter, which one's your favorite? Oh, which one's your favorite? Oh, oh but then there's this one. And it was really neat, really enjoyable experience for the client, of course, and for me as the photographer to see the client seeing their photos for the first time. And this was the first time. I hadn't sent them anything in advance. So I deliver these in a nice little pine box or something. There's, um, I'll put some links because I'm, I don't remember the names of them right now, but I'll, some, I'll put some links in the, um, in the description here. I ordered this little, um, wooden box that had a, not burned in, but somehow printed on my logo and it, the way the box was designed, it's made for this size prints and it came with a USB stick that was also wooden and had the little logo on it. And then I copied the same, I think I delivered 50 looks like 50. I think I delivered 50 pictures. Um, I delivered the same pictures digitally with a watermark and they immediately started sharing those pictures. So obviously that was the expectation. And they haven't ordered prints and that's fine, but I know that they have those prints and I know that they have a much better experience and just they get that tangible thing that we all as photographers really want people to have. So that's my recommendation. My recommendation is provide a small print, low cost to you, high quality, something that they really will appreciate. I believe these cost 20, they're for Artifact Uprising. That's the name of the company. I believe it's $20 for 25 of them. I think that's right. Very low cost. So 50 of them, 40 bucks, very low cost for that. The box itself was, well, I only ordered one because it was a test. Um, next time I'll order like 10 of them, get them, get them at a better, better rate. But a nice box, you pay a little bit for that, and then you have this really nice thing to deliver. So that's that's the idea. They get the digital watermarked, available for sharing on Facebook. If they want prints, now could they, may they have printed something from those digitals that I gave them? They might have, I'll never know. And again, I don't really care. I would, if they want something nice and big, I would love them to come to me. And frankly, if they came to me and said, hey, I want a couple of four by sixes, I'd say, you know what? You've got the digitals, just go print them yourself. Um, Cause it's not worth it. It's just not profitable. But if they say, oh, I want a, a 20 by 30, I want a canvas, I want to print on metal. Okay, now that's something we can talk about there. I'm actually going to make some money. So. Uh, so that's that. That's my recommendation. Do both. You may completely disagree. And if you do, I want to hear about it. This is not a right or wrong. This is the way that I do things. This is what I think works, but maybe something different works for you. So in the comments, whether you're watching this on Facebook, on YouTube or on YouTube, throw it in the comments. Tell us what you do. Tell us what you do differently. Tell us if you think this is a terrible idea and why you think it is. Tell me if you think it's a great idea. Um, and thank you. Just let us know what you think. Again, no right or wrong. Um, but it's a great way to do it. And you get to deliver, now these are obviously bigger, but you get to deliver some kind of print. Now these, by the way, these examples, this was, um, both of these were, uh, well, this is like a corporate headshot, meant to be goofy. There was a reason for this. Um, and this was a, 
she sells uh, Tupperware. She's a Tupperware representative. She wanted a photo that represented what she did. So these were, especially this one, would be more of what you'd call an environmental portrait. So the final delivery for this was not going to be 50 prints. It was one or two images that were going to get used for her branding, used on um, on her web page and everywhere else. And so in this case, I'm not going to deliver, and I didn't deliver a big stack of little prints. I delivered one of these. So. And that was a complete surprise, by the way, to the client, because their need, they don't need a print like this. That's, they don't, that's not what it's for. They need digital. But it was fun to be able to deliver that. Very low cost. These I order from, oh, you can get this kind of thing anywhere. Um, Bay Photo I used to use a lot. Again, I'll put a, a link in the comments to the printers that I've used. Um, very low cost, eight by 10, mounted on masonite. Uh, these have magnets that I glued onto the back so I can hang them on my mounting wall in the studio. But it's just a really cool thing to be able to say, oh, and by the way, here's a print for you. And it's not just a piece of paper, it's mounted on something. So it's got some more heft to it. Um, very cool. Okay, that is all I'm gonna say. Uh, so uh, yeah, prints, prints, digital, small prints, small digital, at least web, web size with a watermark and I think you'll be good to go. Um, that's it. I don't remember what I'm going to do tomorrow. Oh, I also wanted to mention, so I had teased last week the Leica 100 to 400 millimeter lens, showed a little video of that, like, ooh, ooh, we're going to be talking about that. I went out Saturday morning shooting my friend with his dog, Abby, his surfing dog, abbysurfs.com. Um, his surfing dog went to the beach in San Diego and photographed him. Kind of crappy lighting, so I don't have really high hopes for great photos, but it was a, a chance to work with the lens and I shot some video, so I'm going to put something together around that and I will just take that video and release it as a photo moment. Also on Sunday, I was at the LA Zoo for a Paul's photo, um, LA Zoo Day, Zoo Day, LA Zoo Day, whatever. They've been doing this thing for like 25 years. A couple hundred people show up. It's a paid event. They come, they get to spend the whole day at the zoo with a bunch of uh, educators from Paul's photo and representatives from camera companies. As you probably know by now, I'm sponsored by Lumix, so I was there with Panasonic showing off their cameras and uh, walking around and helping people to get used to uh, used to the cameras and try them out. So I got a whole thing about that that I'll be posting later as well, probably again as another photo moment because that was kind of fun, fun thing to talk about. Uh, those will both come up at some point this week. All right, so that's that. I uh, might end up doing one of those tomorrow. We'll see, or maybe something else if I don't get to the editing. That's it, folks. Let me know, uh, for those who watched this live, and uh, came in on the scheduled thing. It's, uh, it's pr it seems like it worked. David Knight, thank you for letting me know that it seemed to work on your end. It's very cool that I can finally schedule these so I no longer have to have the countdown clock going on. Um, and as always, if you've missed any of these, you wanna see the archives, easiest way is to go over to YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can just search for Photo Joseph or type in this shortcut down here, photojoseph.com slash moments. It'll take you straight to the YouTube page. That's it, I'm out of here. Now I gotta figure out how to end this broadcast. Uh, I have no idea how to do this in the new, with the new world order. Uh, oh, look, there's a big button that says end live video. I guess that's the one. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.